Hello, hello, this is Jonathan and you're listening to the Johnny Talks Podcast, the place where we help you achieve your financial goals. Hola amigos, hope you're having a great day wherever you are, but most importantly, I hope you're safe wherever you are and at home. And today's episode was not planned initially, but yet due to the situation, I thought it would be good to exchange ideas recap some financial concepts, what is a black swan event, what is a recession, what makes a bear market, and as well provide a few tips on how to handle your finances in uh, yeah, today's uh, situation or in a crisis in general. And if you're a first-time listener, I would like to give you a special warm welcome to the show. Please be aware that this is not the typical format of the show. You're absolutely welcome to listen to the end of the show, but I'd recommend you you try as well to listen uh, to a couple of other episodes. For example, I have a, a few episodes on the five movements. I have other episodes on stock pickings and the reason why it's important to invest, etc., etc. So yeah, you're welcome to listen to other shows and then you'll have a, an idea of the usual format of the show, I would say. Anyway, once again, welcome to you if you're a first-time listener. And of course, if you're a returning listener, thanks even more for coming back. I really appreciate it. So let's not wait any longer and let's get into it. So what's going on at the moment? Well, yes, the COVID-19 or coronavirus has been spreading rapidly at a large scale across every country in the world. This has had a tremendous impact so far for the infected people, the way we live our daily lives, the global economy and our finances. For those who do not know me, I'm from Belgium. I currently live in Luxembourg, and here the current measures have been reinforced as of last week. In short, everything is closed except the bare minimum. Grocery stores, pharmacies, hospitals, and so on. People can still cross the borders, but only with a valid reason. And uh, yeah, there are many, uh, there are frequent controls by the police, so you'd better have a valid reason for crossing the border, not, uh, hey, I'm going on holiday or whatever. The rules may seem strict, but I'm glad about that. I mean, this virus is a sneaky and devious beast. You may be infected without showing apparent signs. I mean, I could even be infected without knowing it. And you might pass it on unwillingly to your friends, your family or a random stranger. So if not for yourself, it's really important you practice this uh, social distancing and try to avoid infecting other people who are more at risk. For example, your own grandma. So do it for grandma. And yes, sure, I get it. I mean, it will be an adaptation to stay at home to work remotely with the whole family and the kids uh, for the coming weeks under the same roof. But yeah, see it as a short-term pain for long-term benefit for everyone. The virus, this enemy, has already taken a toll on too many lives. And one of the ways we can help each other is to help flatten the curve of the projected amount of infected people by avoiding uh, contact as much as possible. The sooner the expansion of the virus will be under control, the sooner our lives will go back to normal and as well our finances and the global economy. I will not expand too much on the medical issues, the stats and the guidelines, etc. I'll leave that to the experts. So just keep updated with the regulations in your country and follow the guidelines uh, by the World Health Organizations, for example. Yeah, so here are a few ideas and tips uh, I thought of sharing with you. Uh, so number one, well, the most important, uh, well, this podcast is about money and finances. But as I have said it before, your health comes before your wealth, so your priority in these times is to focus on your health and um, of the health of your dearest ones. So follow the guidelines, wash your hands thoroughly, stay at home as much as you can, avoid social contact, practice social distancing. I said it already three times. And should you be uh, still required to go to work, well, take the necessary precautions in the form of uh, wearing a mask, gloves, sitting at a distance from your colleagues, etc. This means as well that you might need to re-emphasize this to your parents, your family and your friends, that they should stay home and stick to the rules and that they should also prioritize their health in these times. Number two, another tip in these crazy times is to practice gratitude every day. Start your day with listing three, five things you're grateful for, and this can be anything, your health, your family, the roof under which you live, your job, the spouse, your husband you love, your church community, your dog, etc. I mean, you can do this with pen and paper, in the form of a prayer, saying it out loud in front of the mirror, I don't know. Uh, do whatever you feel comfortable with, what works for you. Uh, the important here is that you start your day on a positive, calm and confident note. I mean, this is something I've been practicing myself, and for me that has helped me to gain more mental strength, a bigger desire to do good and less desire to do harm. 
So try it for one month and uh, let me know how it went. And I'm pretty sure it will also help you to deal with panic in these crazy times. And on that note, I've also added a video in the show notes uh, about how to deal with uncertainty. It comes from uh, Matt Diavella. He has a great YouTube channel and uh, yeah, check it out for yourself. It's quite cool. Number three, regarding your money, let's talk about emergency funds first, because I think that's the crucial piece of your personal finances in these times. So if it's the first time you hear about an emergency fund, well, this is simply money you have set aside for covering emergency situations like the one we are facing right now. Ideally, uh, what is common advice is that you should have three to six months saved up for covering up job losses, unexpected expenses, medical bills, the wash machine breaking down, etc. And to be honest, with these crazy times, it would not be unreasonable to um, increase it to eight months, ten months or even a year. I mean, who knows how long the situation will last? Better be prepared, right? So if you currently have money saved up in the form of an emergency fund, well, that's great for you. But if you say to me, well, look, Jonathan, I do not have those three to six months saved up. What do I do? How do I get started? Well, the first thing to do would be to look at your budget and have a look and see where you can cut costs. And here, for example, uh, restaurants and uh, movie theaters are closed. So it's an easy uh, budget category to, to cut out. And you can continue on with your uh, utilities companies. You can call your phone company, your uh, electricity providers, etc., and see if they can give you a better rate or you can just go shop around. This is a good time to do it. And with all the savings you're making, well, put that in a savings account and yeah, build up your emergency fund little by little. And if you had some other saving goals at the moment, I don't know if you are saving for a car, for a wedding, for a a down payment, well, maybe you can put those goals on hold anyway, and you can redirect the money you would have saved for those goals towards your emergency fund. And the last point regarding emergency fund, I actually saw this on Twitter. Uh, some guy said, well, look, the stocks are on sale. So would it be a good idea to use my emergency fund to uh, buy those stocks? I mean, I'm, in the long run, I'm making money, right? And I replied to him, I said, well, no, uh, keep your emergency fund for what it is, for emergencies, for job losses, and med medical bills, as I said before. So yeah, for me, but that's my opinion. And uh, here I'm not a financial advisor. So it's just my opinion. So keep your emergency fund for emergencies and keep your investing account for investing. Number four, here are some definitions. So let's define black swan events, bear markets and recessions. So what are these? Because you will hear them often in the news, in the media. So just so that you uh, get a grip of what it is and you can understand better what is talked about. So black swan event. Well, I took the definition from uh, Investopedia. So a black swan is an unpredictable event that is beyond what is normally expected of a situation and has potentially severe consequences. Black swan events are characterized by their extreme rarity, their severe impact and the widespread insistence that were obvious in hindsight. And yes, indeed, the coronavirus is a typical black swan event. Nobody saw it coming. And frankly, I mean, who would have thought three months ago we would be all locked down and become crazy because of a shortage of toilet paper at our local supermarket? And here are some other examples of uh, black swan events. Uh, you have, for example, the 9-11 attacks, uh, the Fukushima disaster, and even World War I. Bear markets. What is a bear market? Well, according to Investopedia once again, because it's such a great resource, check it out. A bear market is a condition in which securities prices, so stocks and bonds prices, fall 20% or more from recent high amid widespread pessimism and negative investor sentiment. I've also seen some variation of that definition where it says that to be called a bear market, it needs to last at least for two months from the drop. Uh, because otherwise it would be called a correction. So when you hear correction, it means that the market has dropped significantly, but for a period of less than two months. And last definition of the day, recession. What is a recession? A recession is a macroeconomic term that refers to a significant decline in general economic activity in a particular region. It has typically been recognized as two consecutive quarters of economic decline, as reflected by GDP in conjunction with monthly indicators like a rise in unemployment, for example. And the thing is, today we do not know if we have entered a recession. As per the definition, it takes two quarters to identify it. So we will see. Uh, but of course, I mean, uh, if you follow the news, you know that uh, all the global traveling has slowed down. I mean, airlines are either shutting down or 
reducing uh, drastically the number of flights, so up to 90%. Some major events are being cancelled, businesses are closing, people are being laid off. So we are certainly at the start of a few months of economic slowdown, there's no doubt about it. But we will see how things play out. And I think the faster this virus is contained, the faster things will go back to normal. And number five, the stock markets. And this is where I get the most questions uh, coming from you guys. So thanks for uh, sending them in and uh, interacting through DMs on Instagram. Um, yeah, so I'll try to answer them the best I can. So just to be sure, once again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just here to um, share ideas, opinions. Yeah, this, uh, this show is for education purposes only and for entertainment. So yeah, please uh, do your own research if you are planning to make a big move with your money or consult with a professional. So the stock markets have dropped significantly due to the coronavirus outbreak and they're very volatile at the moment. This might look scary, but at the same time, this is a great opportunity to purchase low-cost index funds or shares on the cheap. Historically, stock markets have always recovered from a recession and the average inflation-adjusted return is about 7%. Now, past performance is not a prediction of future performance, but it will give you a good idea of what to expect over the long run. And what I believe, of course, this is my opinion, you don't have to take my words for it, but is that the current situation is due to the virus, not due to economic reasons like it was in 2008. So once the virus will be contained, I think we will see a slow a recovery of the economy and then a recovery on the stock markets as well. So for those who are currently investing in the stock markets, what should you do? Well, there's only a handful of things you can do. Buy more shares, sell some shares, or simply do nothing. If you already have some sort of strategy, I'd recommend you stick to it and you continue doing as um, if it were normal times. In my case, for example, I do the dollar cost averaging or the euro cost averaging. That means that every month, I put a portion of my uh, paycheck into the stock market. I like it because it's automatic and uh, kind of brainless. Uh, I really enjoy this way of investing because it removes as well emotions and it allows me to buy uh, shares now on the cheap with the same amount of money as usual. And I'm using psychology against myself by not trying to time the market. I'm in it for uh, 20 to 30 more years. So uh, I have time and I have time to recover from this recession. If you're feeling nervous seeing the stock markets crashing up to 30% of its uh, all-time highs, well, that's normal. But I would strongly recommend against selling your stocks unless you really need the money and you can sleep at night. And remember, as long as you haven't sold anything, you haven't lost anything. It's a loss on paper. And if you're still confused about what to do, maybe the simplest option is to just do nothing. You're in it for the long haul anyway. And for those who are not yet invested in the stock markets, is this the right time to get started? Which stocks should they buy? Well, objectively, yes, you're entering the market at discounted prices and there are some amazing opportunities to grab. You probably heard some uh, Warren Buffett quotes like be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful or buy when there's blood in the streets. Uh, that's from uh, Baron Rothschild. Actually, in today's context, one could say, well, buy when there's no one in the streets. OK, that's my version. Uh, silly joke of the day. Anyway, uh, yes, this is such a time to buy those stocks or uh, funds. Nevertheless, before you enter the wonderful world of investing in the stock markets, you should definitely do your own research. Uh, I strongly recommend you first pick up a book or two. I'll link some of them in the show notes. You can listen to some previous podcast interviews we've, we've had here, for example, with Joseph, Liana or Sandy. Or you can watch some videos of uh, Joseph on his uh, YouTube channel to really understand what you're getting into. <clears throat> and once you have done that, I suggest you take some time as well to define what you want to achieve with your investments based on your time horizon and risk tolerance level. Uh, this should become clear to you once you have read and gone through all this information and then you will be able to find uh, yeah, for yourself what you want to achieve. And uh, let me tell you straight away, if you're in it for a quick buck, well, getting in the stock market will not be the right option for you. The stock market to me is like a marathon. You should be in it for at least uh, five to ten years as a minimum. And now we have arrived at the point where you can open your online brokerage account to which you should contribute to every month. And if you're a beginner, the usual recommendation is to start with uh, investing in uh, low cost index funds. And this is great because they offer a broad diversification at a low cost and they have usually performed well over the long run. And you might ask me, yeah, but Jonathan, I would like to invest in those individual shares like uh, companies like uh, Disney, uh, Netflix, uh, Amazon, Tesla. Why don't you recommend that? Well, the thing is, 
you you surely can, <clears throat> but you just need to do more research beforehand. So you you need to study the balance sheet, the prospects, the industry before you before you put your money into those companies. So you're welcome to do so, but do your own research first. And here comes the last idea, the last topic I wanted to discuss with you today. So these are tough times. So uh, let's be generous in whatever way we can. Let's help an older neighbor. Let's serve in our communities, make donations to uh, charities, the World Health Organization. I mean, there are so many initiatives popping up uh, every day to support each other. Every little gesture can go a long way. So please, pretty please, let's all behave and uh, care for each other. And uh, yeah, let's not be the douchebag that hoards uh, 400 rolls of toilet paper at the supermarkets. Sharing is caring. So that was it for today. So let's just recap the five points before we close the show. So number one, health before wealth. Number two, be grateful, practice gratitude. Number three, uh, build an emergency fund. Number four, stock markets. Stick to your plan and continue to invest or do nothing. And number five, be generous, be a good person, try to help those around you that need it. And yeah, be be gentle and uh, don't hoard all the toilet paper for yourself. So friends, thanks again for listening to the show today. I really appreciate it. And I hope everyone stays safe and healthy during this uh, pending recession. If you have any questions or remarks, please do not hesitate to contact me, john at johnnytalks.com. Send me an email, follow me on social media at johnnytalks everywhere, and I'll speak to you soon.